In Cornwall, they say that to look upon the ghost train means death. If you know Cornwall, then you will know the legend of the phantom train. I remember vividly a winter night three years ago. I was going from London to Truro with Elsie, my wife. I remember the train pulling into that lonely, desolate little station on the moors. It was raining hard as we got out, walked along the platform and came to the waiting room. Just the kind of place you would bring me to. Bring you? Well, I like that. It's cold, wet, and disagreeable. Disagreeable, right enough. And a lot you care. Well, perhaps I'm used to it. Thank you. Well, hang it all, it's not my fault, is it? It's that young fool's fault, losing his beastly hat and then pulling the blasted communication cord. But for him, we should have caught the connection all right. There were four other people at Falwell Station that night. They'd all missed the connection for Truro. There was a couple on honeymoon. I remember the girl vividly. She was very pretty. Never mind, darling. But I do mind, Peggy. This is our wedding night, isn't it? Yes. We don't want to hang about here. They wonder what's happened at the hotel if we don't turn up. I hope they won't think you funked it and changed your mind. I'm hungry and you're tired, and we both want to get to our hotel. Then there was Miss Bourne. She was about 50, and a spinster. Oh, the bird. I beg your pardon. This is the waiting room, I suppose. I see. I beg your pardon, both of you. Oh, uh, not, not at all. What a horrible smell of smoke. <laughs> the other passenger was Teddy Deakin. He looked as if he'd escaped from a, a P.G. Woodhouse novel. Yes, he, he talked that way, too. Oh, good, the fight. Now, uh, seconds I'll ring, round one. ting a -ling. Uh, Be silent, sir. Yeah, oh, sorry. Then there was Saul the local station master and general factotum. He was a harsh, bearded Cornishman. I asked him if there was any place where we could stay the night. There ain't no houses round here. There'll be a farm about five miles on the road. But surely you live somewhere. I bicycle with the Truro. Truro? Well, ladies and gentlemen, it looks as if we should have to stay here till morning. Where's that silly fool that stopped our train? There'll be another gentleman outside. Let's hope he stops there. He ought to be summoned or something. Why couldn't he leave the communication cord alone? Yeah. I say, I didn't care what, what, what a topping place. Well, here we all are then. I say, what, what are you doing? Having an argument? No, we were all perfectly unanimous on the subject under discussion. Oh, remarkable. Yes. Oh, it's actually. Young man, you have no sense of responsibility. I you hear a lot of people, may I? I am. Your lack of concern is monstrous considering you are the direct cause of this most unpleasant situation. My good woman. I am not a good woman. I, I, I mean, please do not address me with such unwarranted familiarity. Oh, sorry, but I do go. You must be fair. How can I help my hat blowing off? Losing your hat was no excuse for pulling the communication cord. Well, it was a jolly nice hat. I, I only bought it last week. Besides, I always wanted to pull the communication cord. Yes, well, you chose a fine time to do it. Here we are, and here we've got to stay. Beg pardon, sir, but you can't stay here. What the devil do you mean? Not being no traffic on the line, everything shuts up for the night. Signal boxes, station and all. I'm off home. Yo, what? Before I go, I have to lock all this shit up. But you can't lock up. Them's my orders, and I got to obey them. Oh, don't be so damn silly. Where, where, where else can we go? You know, there ain't no affair of mine. All I know is, is that orders is orders. You might go to the farm. Do you expect these ladies to walk five miles along a country road on a night like this? You can't stop here. Who's going to stop us? I be. What are you going to do? Throw us out? All right. I suppose I shall have to. All right, well, you better start on me. Well, now, look here, sir. Don't you lay hands on me. No, I'm not going to. I thought you were going to lay your hands on me. Well, we're going to stay, so you better make the best of it. We'll see that you don't get into any trouble. Here. Take this. Oh, well, sir, I don't know. Now, everything's all right, isn't it? Well, sir, I don't know. I suppose I haven't got no choice. That's better. Now, let's see what we can do to make these ladies comfortable. This is a pretty lousy fire. There'll be a fire here in the ticket office. I don't know if that'd be any better. Let's go and see, Peggy. No, oh, wait a minute. Uh, I'm coming too. Uh, come along, madam. Well, what do you think of this, Elsie? Not much. You should be in your element, though. I don't follow you. Doesn't it give you a splendid chance to domineer everyone? 
Already you've threatened to fight the station master and lost your temper. You must be enjoying yourself. Look, Elsie, must we go on quarrelling like this? Can't we just forget it? I can't forget what you said to me this morning, if that's what you mean. It's no use going over it all again. We don't get on and we never shall. Directly we get away from here, I shall go back to London and you must arrange for a separation. It seems such a pity. Did you suggest a separation or did I? No, I did, but... Very well, then. Well, I was in a temper at the time. We were both in a temper. I beg your pardon, but I never lose my temper. Oh, oh what's the use of arguing? Elsie, for the last time, let's forget it. No, Dick, I've made up my mind. I'm going into the other room. Oh, I beg your pardon. Not at all. Well, this is a bit of a mess, isn't it? We shall have to put it up with it until the morning. It's not so bad for you. You've been mad at some time. Yes. Yes, that makes things easier. Yes, I I suppose it does. We, we were only mad at today. Only for heaven's sake, don't tell the others. <laughs> no, 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 of course not. It's a wonderful thing to be married, isn't it? To have someone to stand by you in every difficulty. Well, you will find that out for yourself. Here I am, dear. Did you manage to get a wash? Yes, I found a piece of soap and a towel after all. Peggy, this is Mr... Winthrop, Richard Winthrop. Oh, how do you do? How do you do? Oh, please don't let me drive you away. Mm, no, not at all. I... There's something I, I must say to my wife. Seems a nice chat. Yes. Darling, I'm sorry about all this. It can't be helped, darling. I know, but to start our honeymoon like this, if we were always going to be together, it wouldn't be so bad. If only you could come with me. I'm willing to. You know that. No, I, I couldn't even raise the passage money. Oh, don't worry, darling. Everything will sort itself out. Darling. Walking, walking. Oh, sorry. Don't mention it. We're beginning to get quite used to you. Oh, good. Somebody likes me. I was never at a worse managed station in my life. I shall most certainly write to the company. You wish you would, ma'am. I've written scores of times about the condition, dear. What's the trouble? Well, the rain's coming in through the roof in there. We've had to clear out. I'm hungry. Oh, yes. Is there anything edible here? Eh? Is there anything edible here? Not a drop, sir. Except water, one hardly counts that. Good gracious, I don't know what my poor parrot will think of it. He's sleeping beautifully. Pretty Polly, pretty Polly. I think we'd better draw up the forms of the fire and make ourselves as comfortable as we can. Good idea. <clears throat> hello, hello, what's this on the floor? By Joe, it's confetti. Ooh, jolly good, jolly good. Now, uh, which one of you is it? Uh, you, madam? Certainly not. Well, seeing as though you all settled to stay here, I'll be off home. Look here, I wish you'd stay. We, we, we might want something. But me stay at Falvale Station all night. And that was the idea. See, you. haven't you never heard tell about this year's station? No. I never even knew it was here. Well, what about it? It's haunted, miss. Haunted? Yes. Delicious. Pike, two bits of stuff. Who? Station haunted. Oh, jolly good, jolly good. Ha, ha. You may laugh, sir. Uh, oh, may I think very much? Ha, ha, yes. Maybe you'll laugh the other side of your face before morning. Not for a five pound note when I stay in this station tonight of all nights. You're not afraid to stay with us, are you? I don't know. You've never heard tell on it. No. What is this story? You might tell us what to expect before you go. Come on, yes. What's the mystery? Very well, then, I'll do it, although I warned you it beat no pretty story, and I'd rather be going home. It's like this year. Twenty years ago, this very night, a man by the name of Ted Holmes used to be in charge of this year's station. Did you notice a bridge just down below? Yes, I did. That'd be a bridge over the River Ross. It'd be a swing bridge. It used to be worked by a lever out here on this very platform. In them days, quite big boats that come up the river after the China clay. Them don't come now. Well, 20 years ago this very night, there were a party of people went to a bean feast up to Truro, and they chartered a special to take them back over St. Bland down the line. That was the only night train that ever ran on these lines. It must have been 11 o'clock when they phones down from Truro to shut the bridge as the special would soon be starting off. Ted answers that we will go and shut the bridge that moment. And them were the last words he would ever heard to speak. What happened? As I was saying, Ted answers how he'll go out and shut the bridge that moment, just at 11 o'clock. He goes to the door, and there it was that illness comes to him, 
and he falls down there on the platform, just outside that very door, dead. Well, that made the worst of it, not near the worst it made. As I was saying, just at 11 o'clock, Ted Holmes falls down dead. And after it were all over, outside that very door, they find him, the lamp still burning in his hand. On comes the train down the valley at a fair lick, everyone being anxious to get home. On she comes at 60 mile an hour, I reckon. Poor Ben Isaacs was driving, and it did seem as though when he were just above the station, you something did warn him. But to where the powers above alone oh, no. But he claps on his brakes, and the train goes a tearing through the station year, all the brakes on, the whistle screaming, and then crash. Were there many killed? Six killed outright, and two died afterward. With some miracle, poor Ben Isaacs was thrown clear. He climbs up out of the water and comes back here to this station, his mind clean gone. And they say he walked the platform here for hours, waving a red lamp and singing Rock of Ages. Next morning he died. It was a merciful release. Six bodies they brought up out of the mud and laid out here in this very room. Oh, story. Uh, well, I warned it wasn't no pretty tale he was making me tell. Yes, but where does the haunting come in? Well, maybe I said enough. The ladies be getting scared. Oh, not a bit. It was horrible, no doubt, but I don't see how he can frighten us. Please go on. Ever since that night, this station has been haunted. Who oh, by? Ted Holmes. More than that, some nights the signal bell rings and a train comes a-screaming and a-tearing through the station here with all the brakes on and the whistles a-blowing. Nonsense. Tis God's truth, I'm telling you, sir. I expected some freight train that started this yarn. I tell you, there ain't no trains run down these metals, not from ten at night till seven in the morning. Hmm. You don't believe me, sir. You Cornish are superstitious, you know. Folks in these parts run like mad they hear a train in the night. They do say to look upon the ghost train do mean death. Oh, that's rubbish. Bite a bit, sir. Bite a bit. Two months ago, a tramp breaks into this your waiting room one night, and next morning they find him here dead. Oh, I, I think it's all marvelous. I, I like the whole thing. I, I've never heard anything so funny in all my life. Funny? Yeah, well, you don't expect us to believe it, do you? I do, sir. Well, then you're, you're all bigger loud than I am. And I, I, I thought I was a big one. Uh, you know, that, that reminds me of a story I heard once about a, a haunted police station, or, or, or fire station, or, well, uh, some sort of station in London, or, or was it Manchester? Oh, no, no, I, I, I believe it was Liverpool, yes. Well, uh, there, there, was, there was a man there, and, and one day he saw an old lady, all, all dressed up in black satin, uh, 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 sitting on a, a, a seat, uh, and then she disappeared. He, he went round the corner, and, and there she was again. And he, and he said something to her, and he said, uh, I, uh, Oh, well, I, I can't remember what he said, but, but, but I know it's terribly funny. I think it's the funniest thing I've ever heard. So yes. you're a made game of me, sir. Oh, I, I should uh, don't get angry, old boy. But look here, really, man to man, you know, it's rather a tall story. I, I have never heard anything like it. This is the last time I shall ever travel on this line. I have never heard anything so mismanaged. Isn't there any proper system of signaling? It's only a single track, ma'am. And back when the accident happened, the line was only just open. Things are different now, and the swing bridge is never open. Well, here, what's that uh, lever on the platform for, then? That works the points of the siding which runs up the hill to the old tin mine, only a matter of hundred yards. Well, Station Master, your story's been very entertaining. I'm sorry I can't believe it all, but... Look! Oh, really? oh. What's the matter? I thought I saw someone looking in through the window. I'll go and see. Your imagination, I expect. No, I saw it quite distinctly. This is really a most unpleasant station. Oh, no one about. Not a sign. Uh, well, one of the old boy's ghosts, perhaps. Shut up, you fool. Sorry. Must have been your imagination, Peggy. <laughs> well, that's the worst of ghost stories, Mrs. Murdoch. They're apt to make the best of us, Jumpy. Look, can't you get us some coal, Station Master? This fire's the limit. Sorry, sir, but there's very little coal left. I'll see what there is. It's really dreadfully damp and cold. I'm sure my poor parrot will take a chill. Well, yeah, cheer up, people. It might be worse. This is all very well for you, young men. You have landed us in this most unpleasant situation. But instead of expressing regret, all you can do is to make fun of us. I will not stay in the same room with you. Oh! Oh! What's the matter, Miss Bourne? Oh, I'm sure I saw something move in there. Oh, dear. There's nothing there. 
There's only a sack of potatoes on the floor. And I hate potatoes. Oh, dear. Oh, dear me. Oh, it's all right. Really, it is. Well, I'm going. But look here, I say... No good, sir. Not a bit of good. I won't stay here no longer. Not for hundred pound, I won't. I know too much about this station. Can't you see you're frightening the ladies? It ain't my fault, sir. I warned you when he first came that Falvale Station was no pleasant place to pass the night. If you take some my advice, you'll set out for the farm even now. We'll be back here at seven to see you on the train. And you take my advice, keep in here. And if you do your train in the night, for God's sake, don't go running out to look at me. Look here, stop talking like an old woman. If you believe in your ghost train, well and good. We don't. Understand? All right. Good night, you all. Good night. Good night. Uh, pleasant ride. I hope you jolly well get soup. Thank you, sir. Good night to you, sir. Well, he's a cheery old soul. Well, now we must make arrangements for the night. The ladies had better sleep in here. It's drier than the deed office. I'm sure I shall never sleep anywhere. Come on, give me a hand with this table. Somebody may be able to sleep on this. Blast! We never told that chap to bring us any food when he comes back. He may think of it. I doubt it. He's a very unobliging man. I shall report him to the company. Oh, what's that? Just a minute. Come on, Winthrop. It's the station house. Is he ill? There's blood on his face. Oh, dear, oh, dear. He can't be. What is it? Look, look. What? The lamp in his hand. Well? Don't you remember? Outside the door, we the lamp still burning in his hand. <gasps> Charles, what's the time? It's 11 o'clock. Well, I've gone to mix the potatoes and pick it off. Shut up, you fool. Now, ladies, this is a nasty business, I know. It's given us a bit of a shock. But we must try not to take things too seriously. Can't we go away somewhere? Now, there's nothing to be afraid of now. We've put that poor fellow in the other room and locked the door. Now, let's try and forget all about it. Forget? Oh, dear. Now, we must be sensible. After all, people do die suddenly sometimes, and we have the consolation of knowing that he was spared any pain. And you don't think his death had anything to do with the story he told us? My dear lady, you can dismiss it from your mind. Life's full of coincidences. It was a jolly strange one, wasn't it? It's just what he said happened, and every, every detail. Shut up, you idiot. Yeah, well, that's all. We're all refined, though, but I, I'm entitled, in my opinion, the same as anybody else. You aren't entitled to frighten people. Well, there's no such idea in my head. I, I was only thinking of a story I heard once of some people who spent the night in the haunted mill, and uh, just as the clock strike midnight, the uh, oh, cable... Oh, that's enough. Yeah, well, don't get shirty about it. After all, I, I don't believe in ghosts myself. But still, on the other hand, I, those people who spent the night in the haunted mill, uh, they, they were simply horrible, and they... Shut came... up! Oh, really? Well, I, I, I shan't tell you my story at all now. I feel perfectly sure there's some terrible supernatural force at work. Oh, nonsense. That's what you said before. And yet, look what happened. You're a coincidence. It's no good worrying about it, Miss Bourne. Then there was the face at the window. Oh, that might have been my imagination. But it might not. I'm perfectly sure I saw something move in the other room. Oh, dear, oh, dear. What shall we do? We must pull ourselves together. That's what we must do. Yes, of course. Suppose that train should come. What should we do? What train? Why, the ghost train that he spoke of. Why, do you care if, if the ghost train does come, I suggest we stop it and try and get a lift. Listen. What's up? I could have sworn I heard a step outside. is not like you to be jumpy, Peggy. I'm absolutely certain, Charles. Well, we'll soon settle that. No one about. Oh, do shut the door. <laughs> I'm sure something will get in at us. Oh, dear, oh, dear, why ever did I leave my poor sister? Oh, oh come oh. now, Miss Vaughan. There's nothing to be frightened about. Oh, there's no really. danger, Miss Vaughan. Oh, oh, I feel so ill. I'm sure I'm going to faint. Oh, oh, dear, Miss Vaughan. No, I say, I've just had a brainwave. Oh, what is it? I, I, I've got a, a, a flask of brandy. Brandy? The very thing. Now, come along, Miss Vaughan. Here, have some of this. Oh, dear, no. I must drink tea totally. Oh, but this is different, Miss Vaughan. You should have a little, just as a medicine. No, no, certainly not. What would the vicar say? He said that you behave very sensibly. Do you really think so? Absolutely, sir. 
Then justice pop. Perhaps right. Mm. Uh, dear me, it's hardly as nasty as I had imagined. Come along, have a little more. Do you think I ought? Oh, yes, certainly. The justice. <laughs> <laughs> I say, mm. well, could we all do a crossword puzzle? Oh, shut up. Look here, you've got all the down on me, haven't you? Not at all. Ah, well, are you feeling better now, Miss Bourne? I think I do feel a little better. Good, I thought that would revive you. Here's your flask, Black. I see, good lord. What's up now? Well, look at my flask. It's empty. Well? Well, it's full just now. Full to the brim. <laughs> oh, well, it won't do her any harm. Well, it won't do me any good. Wonderful medicine. Do you know, it's a strange thing. But in spite of all these terrible happenings, I'm beginning to feel quite happy. Oh, uh, uh, Lord. I say, is she? Miss Bourne, wouldn't you like to lie down? Lie down? Why? We thought perhaps you'd be more comfortable. Strongly good medicine. Shall most certainly recommend it to the vicar. <laughs> Made me feel quite sleepy. Just the thing for the vicar. He suffers dreadfully from insolence. <laughs> Now, come along, Miss Bourne. Come along. You can't sit on the floor. And why not? Well, because it's too hard for you. How do you know? Now, come along, Miss Bourne. No, no, I won't. And why not? Because I want to be queen of the bay. Come along, Miss Bourne. Come along, Miss Bourne. Now, you lie down on that table. But why on the table? I have beautiful beds in every room in my house. Beautiful beds. With knobs on. And I have a rule of carpet that goes right down the way up the stairs until you come to the bathroom landing. And there you meet Linoleum. Come along, Mrs. Bourne. Miss Bourne, if you please. I am a spinster. I'm sorry. And so am I. But let me tell you, my bonny blue-eyed boy, that I was not neglected in my youth. <laughs> Come on, take my arm. Better now, Elsie? I wasn't aware that I was ill. Just now. Well? When we found that fellow dead, I, well, I, I was anxious about you. You seemed quite a state. I lost my head for a moment. That was all. It's rather funny about Miss Bourne getting scrippy so quickly. Well, she emptied the flowers. She's gone to sleep. She probably won't wake up until it's light. Well, it is damned hard luck on me. I, I didn't reckon on her knocking back the whole issue. Wait a bit. I just thought of something. Well? There must be a telephone here somewhere connecting with the other station. No, no good. They're all shut up. I've, I've been trying for the last ten minutes. Of course they would be. I forgot that. Who the devil? Tell me, has it come? I beg your pardon. Has it come? I'm afraid I don't quite follow you. But you know, you must know. I'm afraid we don't. I want, to... I want you to help me. Will you help me? Of course, but what exactly is the matter? Hide me from them. Hide me, please. But, but hide you from whom? From them. If, but who are they? You must help me. Don't let them take me back. I can't go back. I can't. There they are. There they are. Oh, what shall I do? They'll find me. They'll take me back again to help me. It's all right. We won't let anyone hurt you. They'll let me hide. No, no, not in there. Where can I go? They're coming, I tell you. Oh, it's all right. It's not all right. Here, get behind the door.
who the devil are you people? That's what I was going to ask you. We come here on a very urgent matter. And we're here purely by the force of circumstance. Oh? I suppose you're surprised to find us here at this time of the night. Very. We're most certainly not here by choice. We lost a connection and had to wait here until the next train. But there isn't any next train. Exactly. You know what this place is. Wait, well, uh, this is Pell Vale Station. Yes. Well, and now perhaps you'll give us some explanation of your, your own somewhat unexpected entrance. Oh, yes, yes. My name's Price. This is Dr. Sterling. We're looking for my sister. Your sister? Yes. Have you seen a young lady about here? We have every reason to believe that she would come to this place. You see, then she's run away from you. In a way, yes. Have you seen her? Why should she run away? Why should she come here? That is not a matter that I wish to discuss with strangers. Very well. In that case, I'm afraid we can't help you. You're here somewhere, Price, I know that. Look in the other room. Oh, very well. Stop! You can't go in there. Oh, and why not, sir? Because, because there's something we must explain. Ah, so she is in there. No. I'm sorry, but I don't believe you. You're doing a very foolish thing to interfere in this matter. She's not there. I give you my word. It's not good enough. Yeah, I mean to get to the bottom of this. Look behind that door, Sterling. Hello. Ah, so there you are, Julia. It's no good. I can't come back. You know I can't. Oh, come along, Julia. Let's get out of here while the rain holds. No, no, I can't. Now, be sensible, oh, Julia. What's the use of talking? I must stay here. I can't help myself. That's enough of this. It's no good. Don't touch me. Go away. The damn it all. Easy, Price. Leave her to me. Well, if she won't come, we must take her. Excuse me, but this lady has put herself under our protection. Now, who the devil asked you to window to here? Kindly keep out of this. You're not going to take her away against her will. Mind your own business. You'd better explain to Price. It's no good trying to ride rough shot in this matter. I'll come to you. Let's sit down by the fire. Very well. Now then, listen to me, please. You people have heard the story about this place, I suppose? We've heard the ghost story, all about this station being haunted, if that's the one you mean. Yes. Now, please don't let my sister worry you. She's, uh, well, she suffers from, well, uh, delusions at times. What do you mean, she's... No, 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 hardly that. It's all this ghost train business. She was near the station one night several years ago, and... Well, she thought she saw the train. I did see it. You know I saw it. I did see it. There, there, Julia. You see, she's Cornish and believes in ghosts. She always has done ever since she was a kiddie. I sometimes feel there's something psychic about her. Anyway, she thought she saw this ghost train, and it was a great shock to her. So great a shock that it, uh, well, it upset her permanently. She's perfectly well most of the time, but some nights she has this idea that the ghost train will run and it has a morbid fascination for her. She feels that she must see it again. Now, this is one of her bad nights. Now, I uh, hope you understand. It will come tonight. I know it will. No oh, nonsense, Julia. It's not nonsense. I know it. I feel it. I'm never wrong. That night the tramp died. I felt it then. There you are, you see. Now, don't let it alarm you. Now, how did you get to know this story? Oh, old Saul Hodgkin. Where is he, by the way? Something rather strange has happened here tonight. Something, well, rather unpleasant. We should like you to know about it. Well? Well, the old boy here didn't want us to say the night. He didn't think it was safe. There, you see, he felt it too. Yes, he told us the whole story and then he said he was, he was going home. And he wouldn't stay here? No. I don't blame him. I wouldn't stay here if I could help it. Good, then come along then. But I can't help it, you know I can't. It, it draws me, I, I've got to see it again. I don't want to see it, but I've got to see it. it it makes me see it. Oh, never mind about that now. Uh, you were saying, sir? He said he was going home. He took his cycle lamp, lit it, and went off. Then we heard a noise, and when we opened the door, he fell inside. Dead. Good God. I knew it. What did I tell you? Now perhaps you believe me. You think there's some supernatural force at work? Yes. Why, that's where they found poor Ted Holmes lying inside the door. What did he do? I'm a doctor, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, where is this poor chap? Let me see. Well, we carried him into the ticket office. All right, I'll go and examine him. You see, it was a nasty business and gave us a shock. Yes, of course. Well, now, come along, Julia. It's time to be off. No, no, I must stay here. The train won't let me go. But there's a lot of difference between the coincidence of two men falling dead and, and a phantom train. But the death of Ted Holmes was the beginning of it all, 20 years ago tonight. Yeah, and I say, what the do? Joe? <laughs> It's on us, all right. Although, under the circumstances, it's rather out of place. Where do we love? I don't follow you. Didn't you tell us that Saul Hodgkin dropped in? Yes, we carry him into the ticket office, and why? <laughs> he isn't there now. No. I don't appreciate this joke, gentlemen, especially considering Julia's state of health. But we all saw him. I've got it. 
I've got it. Well, what's the matter? Don't you see it? See what? It was dead home. Well, what's the deuce are you driving at? Oh, I'm going, Julia. I'm hanged if I'm going to mess about here all night. Good night, all. Where's he gone? He's gone home. Now, you have a little rest, and then we'll all go. Well, I'm going to stay here. Very well, Julia, just as you like. It isn't as I like it. It's because I've got to. The place terrifies me, but this room is full of eyes. They all stare at me. Stare and stare and stare. Don't look at me like that! You think I'm mad, but I'm not mad. This room is full of evil. Yes, Julia, yes. Now, why not come away from it? Why do you keep saying that? Why are you so cruel? You know I'd come if I could. Why won't any of you help me? We want to help you. No. No, you're just as bad. You're as afraid of the place as I am, but you won't admit it. You blame me. Everything is all right, Julia. I'll stay with you. If this thing happens, you won't say I'm mad anymore, will you? Of course not. Everything considered, I really think it would be better for you people to follow Mr. Price's example and clear out. It's only about five miles to the farm and five and a half to Mr. Price's house. I think it would be better to risk a wedding than, well, to bring on any further unpleasant experiences. Murder? What do you think, Pegs? Just as you like. I'm not afraid while I'm with you. How about you, Elsie? I think it would be better to go. I'm not nervous, of course, but this room is very uncomfortable. Very well. We'll go. Yeah, but I think uh, just one fleeting moment. Well? Uh, uh, how about Miss Ball? By Jove, yes. Who's there? Uh, this lady is uh, one of our party. Isn't she well? Well, hardly. She couldn't walk five miles at the best of times. What's the matter with her? Well, it's like this, Doctor. She became rather faint and... Uh, we persuaded her into taking a little brandy. She put away the lot at one fell swoop, and <laughs> now she's passed out. It puts us in rather a quandary. Then leave the lady with us. Yes, look, I've, I've a very good idea. I have. Uh, well, listen, uh, now, it, it's raining again, and I'm not going to walk five miles into the rotten rain for any goes. Uh, I'll, I'll stay here as well and help you look after Miss Ball. I, I, I think she rather likes me. At least you're to after swilling all my brandy. You know, you go with the others. Oh, no, no, not a bit of it. No, no, I... Well, I think we'd better all stay. What do you say, Elsie? I'm not afraid. All right, that's settled then. We stay. In my opinion, you're very unwise. Oh, not at all. I, I think this is a jolly sport. Oh, yeah, well, if you've made up your mind. Yeah, oh, well, by the way, that, that reminds me of, of, of all those people who spent the night in the haunted mill. Uh, they hadn't been in the place for more than half an hour, and they suddenly heard... Yes, yes? What uh, did well, they hear? Uh, they, they heard a Mr. Uh, look and here, once and for all, we don't want to hear that story. Well, it's quite a clean story. Oh. It would be much better to take the ladies away. They say... But when it comes, you hear the signal bell ringing dismally, frightfully. I wonder if the bell will ring tonight. Perhaps. I was thinking, this is the room where they brought all those dead people. Oh, no, no, steady, Julia. Look, look, don't you see it? There, by the ticket office. What? Look, there's Ted Holmes again, coming out of the office. The lamp in his hand, don't you see him? He's crossing to the door. Look, he's opening the door. He's going out onto the platform. All right, turn in the wind. Oh, this is very queer. Huh? Oh, come along, Julia. Let's go into the other room. If you open that door, you'll find him there again. Come on. It shall we go to? Well, I suppose we may as well. Oh, I'm frightened. Darling, I'd give anything in the world to spare you a night like this. It's not your fault, darling. I wonder if that poor girl was right. I say, well, uh, okay, I, I, I want to speak to you, Lou. I, I, I want to warn you about something. What's oh, that? Uh, well, well, the queer thing is that I, uh, I don't know. Uh, but but I, I feel it's my duty to warn you. But what about? Well, I, I've got a sort of presentiment, uh, a kind of nasty feeling, you know. I, I, I feel we, we haven't got over the worst of this yet. Nothing like being optimistic. Well, yes, I know, I, I'm, I'm trying to be, but, but I, I feel pretty sure the worst is to come. Now, I want you to promise me something, will you? That depends. Yes, I, I want you to promise me that if anything unpleasant happens, you'll be guided by me. By you? Yes. Oh, don't look surprised. I, I'm not such a fool as I look. I didn't think you could be. Yes. Oh, yes. Well, as a matter of fact, I, I think I'm, I'm rather a cute sort of fellow, I am. Uh, I, I, I want you to back me up. What are you going to do? Ah. Oh, that's a funny part. I'm um, slightest idea. This is no time for trying to be funny. Oh, no, I'm not. I, I'm deadly serious. Now, now, give me your hand. Why? Well, I, I want you... I want you to keep this. Now, don't show it to anybody. Put it in your pocket. Now, do you understand? No, I don't. No, of course not. No, neither do I. Oh, very really funny, isn't it? Yes, uh, yeah, I, yeah, what's that? Uh, yeah. Oh, what was that? That poor girl moaning in the other room. Oh, 
All right, Julia, it's all over now. Oh, all right, hasn't even started. I don't want to frighten you people, but I know what's going to happen, and it's going to happen soon, just as it all happened before. The whistle, the scream of brakes, the shriek of the whistle, louder, 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 so loud that the noise nearly kills one. It's awful, awful, and I have to see it again. If I see it again, I may die. Then come away. No, no, don't let me. It keeps me here. Why don't you all go away and leave me? Because we are not frightened. Then that makes it all the more dangerous. Why won't you take my advice? You think I'm mad, but I'm not mad. When the train comes... The train can't come. Oh, it came that night, thundering down the valley, and then the brakes jammed on, jarring, tearing. If the train comes, I'll believe the yard. The tearing of the brakes, grinding and rasping, the shriek of the whistle, the dead man lying on the platform, and the roar getting louder and louder, and then into the river below, crash. Don't you hear it? Why don't you go? There's still time. We can't go now. Then for God's sake, stop your ears. Don't look at it. Oh, the train won't come. It's not possible. Now, will you believe me? <laughs> Signal bell. Always rings. What's the time? One minute to twelve. What was that? Hey? I thought I heard a whistle. It's coming. It's coming. No, it's your imagination, I expect. No, no, I'm sure I heard a whistle. Well, let's go and see. No, no, stop. By God, she's right. What? The train. Don't you hear it? Yes, yes, I knew it. It's coming. Steady, darling. Thundering down the valley. It's coming. On, on, on. I can see it. By Jim door stuck. Yes, it's bolted or fastened somehow. This one's locked too. God, we're shut in. Oh, oh, no. Listen to it. Listen to it. I've got to see it. I must see it. I must. Hold her, someone. Let me go. Look Let out, me go. Out, I must out. see it. How is she, Doctor? Mm, difficult to say. Ah, flummox, eh? Yes, I don't mind owning it. You're sure she's not dead? Oh, no, she's not dead. Her heart beat is faint and yet pretty steady. Well, can you have one of those, uh, uh, what you call them, uh, uh, you know what I mean, uh, those listening in things? Stethoscope, you mean? Yes, that's it. I've none of my instruments with me, but that's the devil of it all. Then you don't know what's the matter with the Doctor? I don't. She's had these strange turns before, but they never ended like this. I can't understand it. The train did come right enough. We can't get away from that. And then there's Miss Price. What sent her off like that? Well, don't you remember? She said she saw it. She said, I saw the driver and he was... And then she fell. Of course, that bears out the story of the ghost train. Everyone who sees it dies. Yeah, but my dear, who thinks she's not there? Not yet. Then you think? You can't tell. She's very ill. Oh, it's so terrible. You won't leave me, Dick. I should die if you were to be. I won't leave you out, so let me be. Be a fool, Dick. Such a fool. Never mind that now. But I do mind, darling. I'm not terrible. It's jolly queer about this lady. She hadn't been taken ill. She have told us something about the train. Yes, uh, she, she was telling us, and it seems as if this train doesn't like being looked at. No good puzzling about this business, ladies and gentlemen. We're up against something too big for us. You really think that... I see no other explanation. When I came here tonight, I thought the legend about this place just a silly local yarn. One must take the facts into consideration, though, and they can't be explained away. If it was old Saul you found outside the door, how did his body get out of the ticket office? There's no window but the skylight. If only she told us something before she fell. I say, look, she's coming round. By Jove, you're right. <laughs> better? Hello. Oh, that's splendid. She's better? Yes, I think so. What am I doing here? Yeah, it's all right. You fainted or something. You're better now. Oh, my head. I don't seem to be able to remember anything. Oh, yes, I do. It was the train. I thought it would come tonight. Oh, I, uh, I have these bad turns sometimes. I, I'm sorry, but... I can see now how silly I've been. I ought to have known there was nothing in this ghost business. What do you mean, nothing in this ghost business? I ought not to have given away and frightened you. The train won't come. But the train did come. Please don't try to frighten me. What do you mean? And this is the important point, Julia. Who was the driver? The driver? Yes. I don't know. What was it you saw? Oh, can't you see I'm not well? I think it's cruel of you to make a fool of me like this. It's cruel, cruel. You know, I'm highly strung and nervous 
could you do this to me? No one's trying to make a fool of you. There's no joke. Then the train did come. Yes. And none of you saw it? Only you. The doors were fastened. We couldn't get out. That's that's uh, that's why we can't get out now. Yeah, I hear this joy thrilling. It's awful. What can we do? What can we do? We must all get away from here if we can. If only we'd gone with Price. Oh, I wish to goodness we had. Oh, listen, listen. There's someone outside. By Jove, so there is. Wait a minute. What's up? Have you forgotten the rest of the story? I, I, I don't quite get you. What do you think that is out there? Someone who opened the beast the door, I hope. Suppose it's Ben Isaacs. Yes, by Jove's but... Who the devil's he? Haven't you heard the rest of the story? How Ben Isaacs, the driver, went mad? <coughs> Listen. Who's there? Come in. Don't let it in. Don't let it. We must get to the bottom of this. Pass it, Liv. I'll break the door. Oh, no, no, don't let it in. Don't. Oh, all right. It's gone, whatever it is. Thank God for that. If it had been a man, he would have answered. How many times did he knock? Six. Oh. Well? I've just remembered something. There were six knockings at the door. And the old station master said there were six people killed. Yes. Six dead bodies they brought up from the mud and laid out in this very room. Julia. No, I don't think that's got anything to do with it. We've no proof of it. We've no proof of anything, for that matter. That's true enough. It is Ben Isaacs out there. Yes, yes, yes. This is awful. What can we do? I can't stand it. I can't. Steady, I can't. Steady, Elsie. I can't stand any more of it. I can't tell you. It stopped now. Yes, he's gone away. Suppose he got in. What can we do? Come along, Elsie. Try and pull yourself together. Whatever it is, it can't hurt us. Ah! He's trying to get in. Something must be done or these women will go mad. Yes, I agree. I'll kill. Now, shut up. We're going to make things worse. Well, there's nothing to get excited about. Oh, no? What do you suggest? Do you feel well enough to walk, Julia? Yes, I think so. I'll, I'll do anything if I need to get away. Then you'll go now? Yes. Then let's get out of here as soon as possible. Where can we go? Anywhere. But what about Miss Paul? Well, we must rouse her up at the worst we can carry her. Yeah, but I see my, my dear old things you've forgotten something. Eh? What's that? Oh, we're fastened in, aren't we? Oh, we, we jolly well can't get out. And if we break down the door, we shall let that cap in outside. Yes, don't open the door, whatever you do. Now, look here. If it's a man outside, it's quite safe. We're oh, four to one. Oh, Dick. If it's not a man... Oh, Dick! Well, if it's not a man, no locked door will keep it out. Will you follow me? Yes, I suppose you're right. Right. Let's have another try. And they're fast and filled, both of them. We'll break this one down. Wait! There it is again! We can't go out there! We can't! We shall have to face it. It's madness if we stay here. Something's the matter with the lights. Put off! They're going out! No! 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 Some devil's working! Let's go! Let's go! Dick! Dick, where are you? I can't see you, Charles. No, I'm here now. Ah! Something touched me. Something cold. You're all right? I think so. Ah, oh, Peggy, thank goodness. Someone switched them on again. Look, the doors are open. Come along, let's clear out. Wait a minute. No, no, we won't wait a moment. We must go quickly. We must. Now, look here. I want, I want you all to listen to me and take my advice. You're a fine fellow to give advice on anything, aren't you? Yeah, in this case, I am, old chap. Well, what is it? Now, let's all stay here. Stay here? Good Lord, don't listen to the fool. Stay here, indeed? Yes, why not? Well, because we're in great danger. We're up against some devilish thing. And if we, if we stay, God knows what may happen to us. It was different when the doors were fastened. We had no choice in the matter then. Now it's up to us to take the opportunity and bolt. Right, you all go. I'll stay here with Miss Paul. She'll, she'll, she'll be quite all right. She won't wake up till the morning. That brand new mine was free you all. But aren't you afraid? My dear lady, I'm nearly scared to pump. Enough of this. You're coming. On the contrary, my dear sir, I'm not. Oh, no, why not? Because I happen to be a silly, obstinate ass. And when a silly, obstinate ass makes up his silly, obstinate mind, he usually gets his silly, obstinate way. Now, you follow me? Once and for all, you're not going to stay here alone. Ah, you surprise me. What are you going to do about it? Take you by force, if necessary. I look here. Steady on, Doctor. I suppose the fellow has a right to please himself, however great a fool he is. Thank you, Diane. Out with it, plain to the point. Why have you made up your mind to stay here? Pure custom. One and what else? Idle curiosity. About what? I want to see what happens next. Do you mean to say you risk your life for a reason like that? Oh, quite. Oh, the chap's gone mad. It's our duty to take him away with us. Wait a bit, Doctor. There's more of this than meets the eye. I believe he knows something. Yes, I'm jolly we're going to wait here and see that train come back. What train? The train that went through an hour ago. It won't come back. Oh, how do you know? This train has a supernatural origin. Has it? Do you doubt it, then? Oh, well, to be perfectly candid, I do. Anyway, I'm going to wait and see. What fools there are. If we waste any more time, it may be too late. God, it is too late. It's Ben Isaacs. 
Look here! It's no good. The game's up. You mean that we've been had? Yes. Then there's no ghost train. That train is as real as the Plymouth Express. I tell you... Get back! But what's their game? We're well, not sure yet, but we'll soon know. Ah, here we are. What? Why, as our old friend saw. Yes. And he got you with that sham dead trick of his, didn't he? You got them all, Jackson? Yes, sir, I think so. I thought it was you, I wing. Hurt too much? Put a bullet through my arm, Daniel. Keep your mouth shut. Never appear. But hadn't the doctor better see to his arm? Doctor? What doctor? Dr. Sterling. He's no more a doctor than you are. Didn't you see the way he took Miss Price's pulse with his thumb? Who the devil are you? That's Detective Inspector Morrison of Scotland Yard. Well, I'm damned. Get the train all right, Jackson? Yes, sir. What was he carrying? Just a few boats, sir. Machine guns. Ah. Machine guns? Yes. Gun runners. The train outside is full of machine guns. Thanks for your help, Murdoch. You can prove nothing. Can't I, though? I wasn't sure until tonight, but I made up my mind to get to the bottom of this, especially after you killed Heath. Oh, who's he? The tramp they found dead. He was my best assistant. You can tell us all about that. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. No one can prove it. It's their fault every bit of it. Wish to God I never touched their dirty money. Shut no. up. It's awfully well for you. You haven't got no wife and children. Twenty-five pound they pay me to run that train from their works to the old granite jetty and bring back their guns and such like. You got the guns all right, Jackson? Yes, sir. Then take them away. Right, sir. Come on, you. I don't see it quite even now. Oh, it's all perfectly clear, Mrs. Winthrop. These people started this clay works here in an out-of-way spot to make it a distributing centre for the arms they've smuggled into this country. In the end, I took up the case. I said to Heath to investigate, and he was killed, poor chap. Murdered in this very room. Then is the whole story of the accident made up? Oh no, the, the accident did happen. And there's a strong local superstition about the ghost train. Most likely that gave them their idea. The great thing was they didn't want anyone in this room tonight because the guns might have been spotted on the train. You, you say that every bit of it was a put-up job? Uh, yes, that's what happened uh, tonight. Uh, when Saul found he couldn't get rid of me, he went off to Price's house and told them we were here. Price's house is only, uh, well, a half a mile away, not five. It was all a put-up job, faint and everything. And why didn't Saul send us off to Price's? Well, good gracious, they, they didn't want us uh, there any more than here. This was their busy night. I'm sure you're wrong about one thing. This poor girl is as innocent as I am. Yes, I'm not so sure about her yet. Oh, she's been the dupe of these dreadful men. Yes, yes, you do believe that, don't you? Uh, Jackson, have you got that paper with the names of the gang on? No, sir, it's not on any of them. Have you got it? How did you get out when the doors were locked? You forgot that our mutual friend Saul had a secret way out of this room. I found it. Here, what are you chewing? The paper you're after. She swallowed it. Now go after it. You'll have to dive pretty deep. All gone. All right, take her away, Jackson. Nighty night, kids. Come along, miss. I shall care we've, uh, we've still got one little trouble left. Miss Bourne. She's waking up. Hello, Miss Bourne. Feather? My head aches terribly. Well, there's a car waiting for all of us. You'll soon be safe in Truro. Oh, I'm so glad nothing exciting has happened. Oh, oh yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>